So this week we're going to talk about what's happening in Columbia Falls, actually between here all the way to Glacier National Park. It's turning into quite a dilemma. There was a recent article in one of our local papers here, the Hungry Horse News, that was talking about the amount of short-term rentals or vacation rentals in Columbia Falls right now. Uh, they mentioned Airbnb, and they were saying that right now there's over 600 of them just in Columbia Falls alone, which is pretty amazing. Uh, Columbia Falls, since the pandemic and everybody wanting to come up to Northwest Montana, a lot of people decided to get in on the Airbnb thing, and Columbia Falls has made it very easy to turn your property into a short-term rental. Other towns like Whitefish, there's only certain parts of town that allow it, and so those properties are, you know, they've gained more in value because of that, but there's only a few spots in town that you can do that, whereas in Columbia Falls, it's it depends on the zoning, and most of the zoning will allow it. You just have to go through an application process and register everything with the city and make sure it's up to code and all of that. But it's still very easy to do it, and a lot of people have chosen to do that. So let me read a little bit from this article. It starts out by saying, The number of vacation rentals available in Columbia Falls area has risen sharply in the past few years, according to figures provided by Air DNA. In Columbia Falls, for example, in July of 2019, the number of available listings was only 293, with 270 of those having at least one night booked for that month. By July of 2022, that number had gone up to 595 available listings, with 563 of those booked. And, in, and this year, in 2023, the numbers were even higher. In June, there were 650 listings with 592 that were booked. And they're also talking about Hungry Horse. It says places like Hungry Horse have seen an even bigger increase in vacation rentals, according to Air DNA. In July 2019, there were only 68 listings, and all of them were booked for at least one night. And in, by June 2023, there were 112 listings, but only 88 were booked. And the trend continued further up the line. Quorum, for example, showed 94 listings in July of 2019 with 92 booked. And by June of 2023, there were 224 listings with 207 booked. West Glacier also had a similar trend. So all told, there were about 1,104 vacation rentals listed from Columbia Falls up to West Glacier in June of this year. And countywide, there were 4,507 available listings in July of 2023. And in 2019, there was only 2,600 available. But with all that being said... This article goes on to say that there also appears to be a somewhat softening of the market, at least in the Columbia Falls area. The occupancy rate in June of 2021 in Columbia Falls, which was the height of the pandemic, was 87.2%. But now in June of 2023, it's all the way down to 66.7%. And there were even lower numbers in other areas, for example, in June of 2023, in Hungry Horse, the occup occupancy rate was only 57.7%, and it says that some owners have lowered their rates as a result. They talk about a lady that has a vacation rental in rural Columbia Falls. She said prior to the pandemic, she would rent her place 50 to 60 nights a summer, but during the pandemic, she would go 110 nights a summer. This year, she said she expects to rent her place about 90 nights, but there's a caveat, she said. She's had to look, cut her rates in half to get that occupancy. And the rates are backing up what she says. The average daily rate in Columbia Falls was about $403 a day in July of 2022, but by June of 2023, it was down to $352. 
So it's not like Columbia Falls or anywhere in the valley doesn't have any place to stay if you don't have Airbnbs there. There's all kinds of hotels around Columbia Falls. As you can see, there's a brand new one, the Cedar Creek Lodge that they just built a few years ago uh, and all these other ones. And then you have Meadow Lake. Meadow Lake has been around for a long time and there's all kinds of timeshares and there's rooms in the lodge and there's plenty of places to stay at Meadow Lake. So what are the effects of all these short-term rentals around the valley? Well, one thing is if you have one next door to you, for obvious reasons, it's probably going to be loud and people are here on vacation and partying and, you know, down here to have a good time. So if you're in a neighborhood and your next door neighbor is different people every weekend, that can get a bit annoying. But the biggest issue that we're having in our valley, and I'm sure it's all over the country, is with people, investors, or just regular people turning their houses into Airbnbs, it's taken away rentals for the people that actually live here full time. And with all these numbers that we just went over before and the amount of Airbnbs in the valley, it's just destroyed the rental market for for the locals. And everyone's trying to figure out the answer. I wish I had the answer, but I don't know what you, you can't tell people they can't do Airbnbs. I mean, obviously, like in Whitefish, you can regulate where exactly you can have them. But here in Montana, where everybody likes their freedoms, nobody wants to be told what they can and can't do with their property. So that brings us back to the, the locals trying to find rentals around here that are affordable. Look at this place. They just built this not too long ago, and I looked it up online, and there's only two places available right now, and I'm sure they're probably gone by the time you watch this video. Like I said earlier, I don't have the answers, and I don't know what the answers are for this, but if you're looking to invest in this area, think about buying a house and renting it long term. As you can see behind me, they're building new housing as fast as they can, but it's going to take a while to have the supply catch up with the demand. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.